This is Highway Highlights, checking in on the Aussies competing across the world. This week, Daniel Ricciardo with a return to form in Austria. Jack Doohan takes a podium in a dramatic Formula 3 outing. Hunter McElroy hits the top step on the road to Indy. And bad news for Australian racing fans. Uh, MotoGP and the Formula 1 Grand Prix won't proceed uh, in Phillip Island and Melbourne uh, this calendar year. Max Verstappen won the Formula 1 Austrian Grand Prix, marking back-to-back victories at his team's home circuit, the Red Bull Ring. He put serious points on his championship rivals, with Lewis Hamilton finishing down in fourth. Lando Norris was the star of the race, finishing third. The young star said he could have been even higher without an earlier five-second penalty for forcing another driver off the track. And Aussie Daniel Ricciardo took the weekend as a slight return to form, finishing in seventh. Yeah, obviously yesterday was was not great, so I, I don't want to try to be like too extreme, you know, and and uh, be the guy that when everything goes well, you're like super cool and nice, and when it doesn't, you you hate everybody. So I'm trying to stay a little more level. Formula 3 raced alongside F1 in Austria, with the first race dominated by a tight battle for the race lead. Logan Sargent led the field away from pole position, but was caught by the fast-starting Matteo Nannini, who took the lead into Turn 1. Nannini battled it out for the better part of the race with Clement Novelac, with the lead changing hands multiple times before the pair came to blows. They both collide, Nanini into the back of Novelak. It looks like suspension damage potentially for Novelak. Novelak off Hauger, takes the lead ahead of Corbell Sargent now for the third. So huge, huge implications for the championship, that. Championship leader Dennis Hauger took the lead and didn't look back. A well-deserved victory after starting down in 12th. Yes! 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 Wow! Oh. Nice one, boys. Nice Jack Doohan crossed the line seventh, but was promoted to the podium when more than 100 track limits violations earned drivers a slew of penalties across the grid. David Schumacher took his first win of the Formula 3 season on Sunday in a race interrupted by crashes, including a lap one contact between Logan Sargent and Taman van der Helm, and this crash between Kalen Frederick and one Manuel Correa that sent the American to hospital. It was revealed after the race that Frederick had suffered a fracture dislocation to his thumb, an injury that could take him out of the championship for weeks, in a crash that was ultimately determined to be his fault. But it was Schumacher's race, celebrating his first victory with proud father, Ralph, himself a Formula 1 race winner with 27 podiums from 100 race starts. Jack Doohan finished 7th, a position he was keen to improve on in the final race of the weekend. It was a hectic race throughout the field, marred by a huge crash between Arthur Leclerc and Clement Novelac. Leclerc had been battling with Victor Martins when he clipped the Frenchman's rear with his front wing, sending him out of control and skidding across the track, smashing into the helpless Novelac. When the race resumed, Duan led a tight battle for fifth, with up to 10 cars lining up behind him to mount a challenge. It all ended when he was battling with Matteo Nannini, which sent him to the rear of the field with a puncture. Frederick Vesti took the race win ahead of Dennis Hauger and Ole Coldwell, as Hauger emerged from the weekend extending his championship lead. Ozzy Doohan sits third in the standings. Over on the road to Indy, it was Hunter McElroy's time to shine at Mid-Ohio. McElroy was running fourth in race one when he narrowly avoided contact with Manuel Suleiman, who skidded out on the grass, breaching his car on the curb. Driver off, driver off, guys. Driver off. McElroy took third at the restart and held the position until he ran too wide in a battle with Jacob Abel, gifting Abel the final podium position. Christian Rasmussen took the win, his fourth in the past five races. McElroy was on pole for the second race of the weekend and eager to make up for missing out on the podium. With a tight battle for second developing behind him, he was able to earn clear space and take the race win, his second of the season, and putting him back in championship contention. Yeah, I mean, uh, it hasn't really sunk in really. It's been uh, a pretty wild year, um, but one thing is stayed certain is uh, we never stop pushing. And uh, I know we can do this, and I know we, we showed, you know, put it on pole, let every lap, and, and won. So it doesn't get much more dominant than that. I was just controlling the gap, and the car was on rails. We were pretty much at the lowest of lows, and, uh, you know, that was literally a week ago, and we come back and win. So I think it shows what we do. And uh, I also have to give a huge thanks to all the, the guys, Tom, Joe, everyone, you know, just freaking can't forget you either, dude. And everyone who has just kept believing and, yeah, we're here, so. The weekend was almost over when the Australian Grand Prix Corporation delivered some bad news for local fans. After initially postponing the Australian Grand Prix to November with the promise of a championship-defining race late in the season, it was decided that COVID protocols and a two-week quarantine would be too harsh for organisers. Uh, MotoGP and the Formula One Grand Prix won't proceed 
uh, in Phillip Island and Melbourne uh, this calendar year. Um, it's certainly um, not where we expected to be um, when we announced the November date back in January. We, we are not the only country to face this. Um, and I think um, the, uh, we will start discussions with Formula One management um, very shortly about next year and extensions based on being able to uh, make up for the, the last two years. But at this point in time, dealing with this event this year was priority for us. Well, there, there wasn't one particular point that uh, um, meant that this could not be staged, apart from the fact that very, very clearly and importantly, there's a set of prevailing medical conditions at the state and federal level that mean the event cannot be taking place. Daniel Ricciardo was quick to respond. His home race called off for the second time in two years after being one of the first global events cancelled due to COVID-19, with fans turned away at the gates in 2019, just hours before the first on-track running. Uh, yeah, sure most of you have seen the news now where unfortunately can't come home for the race uh, this year. It hurts. I know we're all looking forward to it and particularly myself to, to race in Melbourne again. But um, look, we got to keep our chin up, look forward. Hopefully in 2022 it can happen and I'm sure by then it will be bigger, better and more beautiful than ever. Um, but yeah, for now, just stay stay healthy, stay safe, do what we got to do to make it happen in uh, in 2022. So look forward to seeing you all there soon.